Pipirina has a rhythm to it, a harmony. But in order to achieve this harmony, you have to go beyond the mechanics of muddling lime with sugar. You have to understand its soul. Brazilians joke that the caipirinha is the perfect cure for the common cold. Lime for vitamin C, sugar for energy, and cachaça for medicine. It probably doesn't do all those things, but nonetheless, it has achieved mythical perceptions that lead people to believe it. Most drinks were invented by famous bartenders in famous bars in Europe, the United States, or the Caribbean. How many famous drinks do you know that were invented by regular people? So regular, in fact, that there's no known author, time, or place for the caipirinha. It was named after the caipiras, country people from the center of Brazil, the states of Mato Grosso, Goiás, Minas Gerais, who probably invented this drink. But we don't know exactly where or when. It's probably a hot summer day, though. And that's the point of it. The caipirinha has a reason for existing that goes beyond cocktailing. You put these things together that are handy, sugar, lime, cachaça, cane slip, and you use them to cool yourself down and relax a little bit. The diminutive caipirinha, which means little caipira, has to do with the small size of the drink, which is necessary in the hot weather so that the drink is consumed quickly before it's all melted and diluted. But in Brazil, you may order it as a caipira, just to say it more quickly. The caipirinha is a perfect example of a cocktail that should engage all five senses. It should look good, thus you need pieces of lime showing all around the glass. It should smell good to invite you to drink it fast before the ice melts and gets diluted. It should taste good, of course, and it should feel good to the lips. It should also sound good in the shaker. Like everything else in life, an experience that engages all the senses will be much more memorable than one that does not. You feel the caipirinha as you're making it. I smell the muddler after I muddled the lime and sugar together. If it smells balanced and your cachaça is good, the finished drink will taste great. You can definitely catch your mistakes as you move along when you're making this drink. How do you know if you've succeeded? If there's a smile on the face of the person to whom you hand it, you've won. Good job, they'll probably want another one in 10 minutes. Okay, shaking versus stirring. The Brazilian way is to stir, leaving the cachaça mostly alone. That is for people who have been drinking cachaça neat for hundreds of years. Also, in the heat of Brazil's non-air-conditioned summers, the ice melts faster. So not shaking the drink means that you'll have more time to drink it since ice dilutes during shaking. A friend of mine who lives in Brazil says that shaking just makes you feel hot when you're already hot, so why bother? When stirred too, the drink changes flavor, starting out a little more sour and ending up more sweet. Now, up here in North America, there are rules that say that you must shake a drink that has citrus in it to integrate it better. North Americans also keep their eyes colder, I think, and that makes a difference. So it all depends on the circumstances. Lately, I've seen more and more Brazilian bartenders shake the caipirinha, and I think that it represents uh, Brazil's desire to become part of the craft cocktail world, as well as an improvement in bar equipment and better management of the ice temperature. This is a social cocktail. You make one, you pass around, everyone tries it. You make another, you pass around, everyone tries it. Much like Chimajon, much like so many things in Brazil that are shared. And sharing adds a positive emotional component to the drink, which makes it taste better. This is a cocktail that gets as close to the hearts of a country's people as anything you've ever seen. Brazilians identify with the caipirinha. It is a symbol of relaxation and good times. Maybe a reward for a good day or an attempt to forget a bad day. It puts an instantaneous smile on the face of the Brazilian. And with this emotional connection, it's no surprise that caipirinhas feel like they taste better when you're in Brazil. In fact, I've only had one bad caipirinha in Brazil ever. The nuances of this drink are very fine. Everything matters. The limes, the sugar, the cachaça, the ice, the glass, the environment where you're preparing it and serving it, the ambient temperature, everything. It takes a while to get it right. I think I made about 20 drinks before I even made a decent one. And I know that most Americans have never been to Brazil, at least not yet. But to get this drink right, you have to understand its roots. You have to understand why the environment guides the technique. A good caipirinha tastes good, but a caipirinha that respects both its heritage, where it came from, and its present, where it is being made today, will be remembered forever.